After World War II, the U.S. Air Force began developing a new long-range penetration fighter capable of escort missions. The P-51 Mustang, the iconic American fighter bomber that escorted hundreds of B-17 flying fortresses all over Europe and the Pacific to bomb Japanese and German strongholds, now belonged to a glorious past. The XF-88 project was born to build a replacement for the P-51 Mustang. As the Cold War loomed on the horizon, the era of jet-powered planes became the future of aerial combat. The XF-88 went under extensive modifications to fulfill the requirements the USAF specified for it. Besides its primary role as an escort, the new plane had to be extremely fast and capable of handling itself in aerial combat. During development, it incorporated afterburning engines and a nose-mounted Allison XT-38 experimental turboprop. However, budget shortages and a sudden loss of interest for high-speed propellers led to its cancellation. The prototype never saw mass production. Nonetheless, once the Korean War ended, the XF-88 came back to life with the F-101 Voodoo, an enlarged version of the aircraft that met newer Air Force requirements based on lessons learned during the war. Both the experimental XF-88 and the production F-101 pushed the limits for aircraft that could break the Mach 1 barrier. Following the end of World War II and at the dawn of the jet era, the U.S. Air Force realized it would soon need a replacement for the P-51 Mustang. The XF-88 originated from the U.S. Air Force request to create a new long-range penetration fighter that could handle escorting bombers, such as the B-36, to their designated targets. The Mustang had a combat radius of only 900 miles, and the U.S. wanted a plane that could fly even further and even faster. Various proposals were considered, but they all ended without success. In one ambitious experiment, P-80 and P-84 escorts were towed by modified bombers to expand their operational range and airtime. This, however, proved impractical. Further experimental prototypes, such as the XP-81 and the XP-83, also showed some early potential because of their increased fuel capacity. Still, they lacked enough power and were unstable in testing. On April 1st, 1946, the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation began working on a brand new prototype, dubbed Model 36. On June 20th of that year, the contract was signed. Under the guidance of Dave Lewis, the chief of aerodynamics for this new project, the company was tasked with producing two test models that were given the designation XP-88 by the Air Force. U.S. military planners wanted a unique aircraft that could do more than just escort bombers. The plane also had to operate deep within enemy territory against ground targets and enemy airplanes. That task is what defined a penetration fighter. Additionally, the Air Force wanted this new prototype to include a turbojet engine. The first XP-88 design was intended to have straight wings and a V-shaped tail. However, wind tunnel tests conducted by the prototyping committee indicated that the design was encountering aerodynamic problems. As a result, the front end of the air intake was modified, the wings were replaced by a more common swept design, and a traditional tailplane configuration was incorporated. After these modifications, in February of 1947, the Air Force told McDonnell to continue with two XP-88 prototypes. When the airframes were delivered on October 20, 1948, at Moroc Army Airfield in Southern California, the name had been changed to XF-88 Voodoo. These prototypes emerged with a low to mid-mounted wing, swept to 35 degrees, and a pressurized cockpit with an ejection seat for the pilot. The offensive armament was composed of six 20mm M39 cannons housed in the Voodoo's short nose. They had no radar. As specified by the Air Force, the engines were two Westinghouse J-34 turbojets located in the lower fuselage. The engines were fed by air intakes in the wing roots and jet pipes beneath the rear fuselage. These unusual modifications made enough room for the fuel tanks required for the long-range flights of the escorts.
In October of 1948, the XF-88 made its maiden flight at Morocco Field. It was unarmed and powered by the twin Westinghouse J-34 engines. Although the first test demonstrated adequate handling and the desired endurance, the aircraft proved to be underpowered, with insufficient range and registering a top speed of just 641 miles per hour. This underperformance did not meet the requirements of the USAF. The first prototype was updated to use twin XJ-34 WE-15 engines, and the fuel capacity was also increased. As a result, performance improved by a small percentage, but this came along with an unwanted increase in fuel consumption. This trade-off once again left the XF-88 unable to fulfill the expectations of the Air Force. The second prototype was presented on April 20th, 1949. It was labeled XF-88A. This prototype was fitted with afterburning J-3422 engines that improved the top speed to 700 miles per hour at an altitude of 20,000 feet. However, just as it had occurred with the first prototype, reaching the speed was at the cost of decreased range and elevated fuel consumption. The speed difference with the original prototype was approximately 60 miles per hour. Out of time, McDonnell had no choice but to submit the underperforming XF-88A to the Air Force's penetration fighter contest. It faced off against the Lockheed XF-90 and the North American XF-93A. The results showed that the XF-93A was the superior aircraft. The North American ultimately won the contract. It would eventually reach production as the F-86 Sabre. Due to a shortage of funds and continuous changes in the USAF priorities, the XF-88 project was cancelled in August 1950. Although they had lost the production contract, McDonnell continued to tinker with the XF-88 design internally. This proved wise, as the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics later came calling with a request for McDonnell to convert the second prototype into a high-speed propeller research airplane. The new XF-88B configuration would include a nose-mounted Allison XT-38 experimental turboprop while retaining the other two engines as the primary propulsion. This new project was developed as a joint effort between the Air Force and the Navy. The first supplied the aircraft and test propellers, while the latter provided the XT-38 engine's turbojets. The XF-88B was flown on April 14, 1953, at the NACA Aeronautical Laboratory from Hampton, Virginia. Through 1956, three propellers were tested at flight speeds that slightly exceeded Mach 1.0, making the XF-88 the first propeller-equipped aircraft to do so. McDonnell also proposed a two-seat XF-88, with naval and reconnaissance variants. Not drawing much interest, those plans were scrapped in 1958. Ultimately, the XF-88B's development was cancelled at the Korean War's height when interest in high-speed propellers had almost disappeared from the USAF priorities. Even so, the combat experience gained from the so-called Forgotten War allowed the Air Force to reconsider its plans for penetration fighters. This eventually led to new specifications for long-range fighter planes. The third time would be the charm in this beleaguered development cycle, as an enlarged version of the XF-88 would happen to meet those new requirements. It would become the F-101 Voodoo. When the USAF issued a new general operational requirement in February of 1951, McDonnell Company began working on an enlarged version of the XF-88 that would fit the latest specifications. While designed at first as another penetration fighter, with greater capabilities as a bomber escort, the plane quickly evolved into a nuclear-armed fighter bomber. Now labeled as a strategic fighter, the F-101 Voodoo had to fulfill these two roles, escorting and delivering nuclear weapons. This powerful version of the XF-88 won the bid in May 1951 and was redesignated F-101 Voodoo. This design was able to carry three times the fuel load of the XF-88. It also used a more powerful engine, the Pratt & Whitney J-57 turbojet. This engine's dimensions required modifications to the engine bays and the intakes to allow the engine's appropriate amount of airflow. An essential aesthetic visual that made the F-101 Voodoo was its T-tail. 
The change on the tail was made to increase the plane's aerodynamic efficiency and alleviate the nose's pitch-up phenomena. For its combat armament, the Voodoo was equipped with four 20mm M39 cannons and a single Mark VII hydrogen bomb mounted beneath the left wing. USAF officials approved the design, and an initial order of 29 airplanes was placed on May 28, 1953. No prototype was required, as the F-101 was considered a modified version of the XF-88, whose prototypes were already being tested. The F-101 Voodoo had its maiden flight on September 29, 1954, at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The aircraft was able to reach 597 miles per hour at an altitude of 35,000 feet. Eventually, the F-101 Voodoo, just like its predecessor, successfully surpassed Mach 1.0. The development of the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, a long-range subsonic jet-powered strategic bomber that no longer required escort bombers' assistance, led to the Strategic Air Command withdrawing from the XF-88 project. Despite this loss of interest, the Tactical Air Command still wanted to use the Voodoo as a fighter bomber to carry a single nuclear weapon against strategic objectives. During test in 1955, design bugs were worked out, and in 1956, production was resumed. Several F-101 Voodoo variations were created for different reconnaissance, interception, bombing, and fighting purposes. Despite not being able to be tested in combat during the Korean War, the Voodoo saw extensive action during the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 and the Vietnam War. There, the F-101 Voodoo and its variants were used for reconnaissance and strategic bombing missions. The XF-88 never left the testing grounds, and it never saw production. However, the prototype made history as one of the first non-research airplanes that could reach speeds above Mach 1. Its legacy, the F-101 Voodoo and its variants, proved to be worthy successors and turning points for aircraft that could consistently reach speeds over Mach 1. <laughs> 